Blessed be God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Glory be to God on high, and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee. We give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord, thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord of all power and might, the author and giver of all good things, graft in our hearts the love of thy name, increase in us true religion, nourish us with all goodness, and bring forth in us the fruit of good works through Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated, and you're free to remove your masks uh, as long as you're in your pew. A reading from Jeremiah. O Lord, you have deceived me, and I was deceived. You are stronger than I, and you have prevailed. I have become a laughingstock all the day. Everyone mocks me. For whenever I speak, I cry out. I shout, violence and destruction. For the word of the Lord has become for me a reproach and derision all day long. If I say I will not mention him, or speak any more in his name, there is in my heart, as it were, a burning fire shut up in my bones. And I am weary with holding it in, and I cannot. For I hear many whisperings. Terror is on every side. Denounce him. Let us denounce him, say all my close friends, watching for my fall. He hopes he will be deceived. Then we can overcome him and take our revenge on him. But the Lord is with me as a dread warrior. Therefore, my persecutors will stumble. They will not overcome me. They will be greatly shamed, for they will not succeed. Their eternal dishonor will never be forgotten. O Lord of hosts, who tests the righteous, who sees the heart and the mind, let me see your vengeance upon them. For to you have I committed my cause. Sing to the Lord, praise the Lord, for he has delivered the life of the needy from the hands of the evildoers. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 69. Save me, O God, for the waters have come up even to my neck. I sank down in the deep mire where there is no ground. I have come into deep waters so that the floods run over me. I am weary of crying, my throat is dry. My sight fails me from waiting so long for my God. Those who hate me without a cause are more than the hairs of my head. Those who are my enemies and would destroy me wrongfully are mighty. They bid me restore things I never took. 
O God, you know my foolishness, and my faults are not hidden from you. Let not those who trust in you, O Lord God of hosts, be ashamed because of me. Let not those who seek you be confounded through me, O God of Israel. Surely for your sake have I suffered reproach. Shame has covered my face. I have become a stranger to my brethren, unknown to my mother's children, because zeal for your house has consumed me, and the reproaches of those who reproach you have, bef- have fallen upon me. I wept and humbled myself with fasting, but that was turned to my reproach. I put on sackcloth also, and I became a byword among them. Those who sit in the gate speak against me, and the drunkards make songs about me. But Lord, I make my prayer to you in an acceptable time. Hear me, O God, in the multitude of your mercy, even in the truth of your salvation. Take me out of the mire, lest I sink. O let me be delivered from those who hate me, and out of the deep waters. A reading from Romans. But the free gift is not like the trespass. For if many died though one man's trespass, much more have the grace of God and the free gift by the grace of that one man, Jesus Christ, abounded for many. And the free gift is not like the result of that one man's sin. For the judgment following one trespass brought condemnation, but the free gift following many trespasses brought justification. For if, because of one man's trespass, death reigned through that one man, much more will those who receive the abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness reign in life through the one man, Jesus Christ. Therefore, as one trespass led to condemnation for all men, so one act of righteousness leads to justification and life for all men. For as by the one man's disobedience the many were made sinners, so by the one man's obedience the many will be made righteous. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Jesus said, Behold, I am sending you out as sheep in the midst of wolves, so be wise as serpents and innocent as, as doves. Beware of men, for they will deliver you over to courts and flog you in their synagogues, and you will be dragged before governors and kings for my sake to bear witness before them and the Gentiles. When they deliver you over, do not be anxious how you are to speak or what you are to say, for for what you are to say will be given to you in that hour. For it is not you who speak, but the spirit of your father speaking through you. Brother will deliver brother over to death, and the father his child, and children will rise against parents and have them put to death, and you will be hated by all for my name's sake. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. When they persecute you in one town, flee to the next, for truly I say to you, you will not have gone through all the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. A disciple is not above his teacher, nor a servant above his master. It is enough for the disciple to be like his teacher and the servant like his master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebul, how much more will they malign those of his household? So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered that will not be revealed or hidden that will not be known. What I tell you in the dark, say in the light, 
and what you hear whispered, proclaim on the housetops. And do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? And not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. But even the hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not, therefore, you are of more value than many sparrows. So everyone who acknowledges me before men, I also will acknowledge before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I also will deny before my Father who is in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. My twin brother Mark and I were fairly small as children, which I know that probably surprises you seeing how large I am now. But our mom had been a pediatric nurse um, before we were born, and so she could be at times just, just a little bit overprotective. And she absolutely forbid us from playing football, knowing for sure that we would get broken into a million pieces on the gridiron. So my brother figured he didn't stand much of a chance when in high school he decided he wanted to play lacrosse. But to our great astonishment, our mom said that that would be fine. Now she later admitted that she had no idea what lacrosse was. It sounded French, so how dangerous could it be? And this was back in the day before Google and YouTube, so I'm sure if she had been able to do an online search and had discovered what lacrosse was, she would have very quickly said, nope, no way, no how. But it really wasn't until she had already signed Mark up and took him to the store to buy the equipment that she realized that perhaps the sport was a bit, more, uh, a bit more dangerous than she had initially assumed. Now, if you, like my mom, are not familiar with lacrosse, imagine football, but they give everyone a stick to use as a weapon. That's basically lacrosse. And my brother felt pretty good about pulling one over on our mom until he blew out his knee halfway through his second season of lacrosse. Now, to my mom's credit, she never said, I told you so, because I think an entire summer of being on crutches for my brother was punishment enough. And needless to say, he never played lacrosse again after that. Now, I think a lot of times we get into Christianity thinking that it's going to be safe and easy, even perhaps a little boring. How dangerous can it be sitting in a beautiful building and singing old hymns with an organ and a choir? I remember one time as a kid, as I was kneeling before a service, I slipped off the kneeler and I smacked my chin on the pew in front of me. But that's as close as I've ever gotten to a church-related injury. And yet... Jesus presents us with a very different vision of the Christian life. And like lacrosse, Jesus tells us it can, in fact, be very dangerous. In our gospel reading today, Jesus has just appointed the 12 apostles, and he's sending them out to proclaim the coming kingdom of God. And after giving them some basic instructions on how to operate during this missionary endeavor, he proceeds to tell them very plainly what they are to expect. And it is not a rosy picture that Jesus presents. He doesn't say, everyone's going to love you. It's going to be great. And begins in verse 16 by saying, behold, I am sending you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. So be wise as serpents, and innocent as doves. 
Now to send sheep into the midst of wolves for the shepherd would seem foolhardy at best. Sheep are not particularly fast or aggressive, and they are easy prey for wolves. And so for a shepherd to do this would almost certainly mean the loss of his beloved sheep. But Jesus is telling his disciples that he is sending them out into what is surely to be great danger. It would be the equivalent of sending me out to return a punt in an NFL football game wearing nothing more than a t-shirt, gym shorts, and flip-flops. Even this, at this early stage in Jesus' public ministry, he's already being seen as a radical and a revolutionary. And he knows that his disciples are going to be seen in this same light, and that is not a safe place to be. So how are the disciples to handle such a great danger? Jesus tells them to be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. And this is a really difficult balancing act. As Bishop N.T. Wright says, Christians often find it easy to be one or the other, but seldom both. With innocence, shrewdness can, without innocence, shrewdness can be manipulative. Without shrewdness, innocence becomes naivete. Well, Jesus then tells them what kind of persecution they're going to encounter. <clears throat> and the first type is legal persecution. He tells them, beware of men, for they will deliver you over to courts and flog you in their synagogues, and you will be dragged before governors and kings for my sake, to bear witness before them and the Gentiles. Now in Jesus' day, Jewish power was divided between two major ruling parties, the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And like modern-day Democrats and Republicans, they were often at odds with each other on a number of different issues, but they found a common enemy in Jesus and his disciples. And so imagine if, if Mitch McConnell and Nancy Pelosi decided to put, a, to put aside their differences and unite for the sole purpose of coming after you. And that's exactly what Jesus is preparing his disciples to walk into. And while this may be scary, Jesus tells them that it's also going to be an opportunity. While the Romans allowed the Jews to self-govern in many areas of their lives, punishment for crime was something that was left to the secular authorities. And Jesus assures his disciples that this legal persecution would allow them to share the message of God's kingdom with the Gentiles. He goes on to say, Do not be anxious how you are to speak or what you are to say, for what you are to say will be given to you in that hour. For it is not you who speak, but the Spirit of your Father speaking through you. Now notice, Jesus isn't saying you're going to be given a stellar defense so that you can get out of punishment. Instead, he's encouraging his disciples to use these occasions to continue proclaiming the gospel, even if it leads to punishment and death. Now, unfortunately, the persecution won't stop here. Starting in verse 21, Jesus continues, Brother will deliver brother over to death, and the father, his child, and children will rise, up, rise against parents, and have them put to death, and you will be hated by all for my name's sake. Now it's one thing for the religious leaders and the government to come after you, but Jesus lets his disciples know that it's going to be very personal as well. The gospel will endanger even the most intimate of relationships. Jesus will say later on in this very chapter, whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And of course, he's not saying that we should hate our family or that we should abandon our families. But he is letting us know that many people are going to be forced to choose between their own family and the kingdom of God. 
Now this would have to be the most gut-wrenching decision a person could ever have to make. And I've seen many people who when faced with this very choice have chosen family over the, over the gospel. Jesus is telling his disciples that this is going to be by far the hardest thing that they will ever have to do. He's not simply asking them to give up an hour of their time on Sunday morning or a tenth of their income to the church. He's not just asking them to be a Sunday school teacher or to help make coffee on Sunday morning. He's telling them that the kingdom of God is so important that they need to be willing to risk absolutely everything for it, even those things that are most important to them. Nothing can stand in the way of proclaiming this good news to a dying world. Now by this point, I would assume the disciples are probably getting a bit discouraged, and so Jesus reassures them. In the next seven verses, he tells them repeatedly, don't be afraid, fear not, have no fear. In verse 28, he says, and do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Now, as human beings, I think the thing that we naturally fear most is physical death. The reason we're so terrified of this virus right now is because it can be fatal. If it was just a matter of us getting a runny nose or some aches and pains, we probably wouldn't care that much. But over 100,000 people have already died from the coronavirus in our country alone. To put that into perspective, we lost fewer American lives in the Vietnam War than that. And so we are rightly scared. But Jesus is telling his disciples that there is something even scarier than physical death. And that is spiritual death. Now, I certainly don't have a death wish. I wear my seatbelt. I try to drive the speed limit. I wash my hands frequently. I wear a helmet when I ride my bike. But if I were to die today, the absolute worst thing that would happen is that I would get to go and be with Jesus for eternity. Not so bad. And so that really doesn't scare me. But if I were to die outside of his grace, that would be terrifying. If the choice that I have is either to die for my faith or to reject Christ, the second option is far scarier than the first. Jesus is trying to get his disciples to have the same perspective on their mission. They need to be ready to suffer now for the sake of an eternal reward in God's kingdom. Our reading concludes with some pretty direct words from the Lord. He says, So everyone who acknowledges me before men, I also will acknowledge before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I also will deny before my Father in heaven. These words rang loudly in the ears not only of his disciples, but of the early church as well. I'm currently reading a book called When the Church Was Young, and it's about the first four or five centuries of the Christian church. And many of these early church fathers suffered greatly and even died for the sake of acknowledging Jesus Christ before others. But what about today? Is it enough to just throw up a dank Jesus meme on Facebook and then get into arguments with people in the comment section? Is that what Jesus is talking about? I think it can be hard for us to wrap our minds around what Jesus means because relatively speaking, we don't see a lot of blatant persecution of Christians in the United States today. But that doesn't mean that we're off the hook. That doesn't mean what Jesus is saying in our gospel is irrelevant to us. 
even though Jesus is giving some pretty specific warnings in our text, his underlying message to the disciples is the same message that we need to hear today. He's asking, what are you willing to give up for the sake of the gospel? What are you willing to sacrifice? That is a question that we need to ask ourselves. What are we willing to risk to give up for the sake of Jesus? If your boss asked you to do something that would violate your Christian witness, would you be willing to say no and lose your job for it? If your son or daughter wanted to participate in a sports league that would require missing Sunday morning worship on a consistent basis, would you be willing to make worship, worshiping with the body a priority in your family? If giving faithfully and sacrificially to the work of the church means having to drive a cheaper car or go on a less expensive vacation, are you willing to do that? And these are all relatively small examples. And yet, modern day American Christians capitulate on them every day. Can you imagine asking one of these church fathers who gave his life for the faith, uh, told him that people will miss an entire season of church for soccer? They wouldn't even have a category to comprehend that. And yet we do it every day. All of these things point out how little many of us are actually willing to risk for our faith. You see, Christian persecution is not simply about what other people are doing to us. It's about what we are willing to suffer for the sake of the gospel. For those of us living in Springfield today, the risk of beatings or death may not be very high, but that doesn't mean that our faith isn't still supposed to be dangerous. When we take our faith seriously, being a Christian will always come with a cost. Throughout history, the greatest witness of Christian men and women has always been their willingness to lay down everything at the feet of Jesus. This is how we acknowledge Jesus before others. But have no fear. As Jesus says, even the hairs of your head are all numbered. So be prepared for difficulty in this world, but stand firm. Jesus has overcome the world and all of our pain will one day be turned to rejoicing in God's kingdom when Jesus acknowledges us before his Father. Amen. Please stand. Let us confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man. He was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost,
the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world, saying, Hear our prayer. For the peace of the whole world and for the well-being and unity of the people of God, Lord, in thy mercy, Hear our prayer. for Foley, our archbishop, and Foley and Frank, our bishops, and for all the clergy and people of our diocese and congregation. In our diocesan cycle of prayer, we remember Christ Church in Cashiers, North Carolina. We pray for Bill and Vicki, who celebrate their birthdays this week, and Ron and Jan, Mark and Jane, and Bruce and Shelley, who celebrate the anniversary of their marriage this week. Lord, in thy mercy. For all those who proclaim the gospel at home and abroad, and for all who teach and disciple others, we remember especially the Whittakers in Cambodia, the Smiths in Chile, the Littles with Worldview Academy, Pastor Daniel in Asia, Father Chris and the Anglican Frontier Missions, and Father Nathaniel and the Table. Lord, in thy mercy. Hear our for our brothers and sisters in Christ who are persecuted for their faith. Lord, in thy mercy. Hear our for our nation, for those in authority, and for all in public service, especially Donald, our president. Lord, in thy mercy. Hear our for all those who are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. We implore thy mercy for all affected by the novel coronavirus, that by thy blessing upon them and upon those who minister to them with thy healing gifts, they may be restored to health of body and mind according to thy gracious will, and may give thanks unto thee in thy holy church through Jesus Christ our Lord. Lord, in thy mercy. For all those who have departed this life in the certain hope of the resurrection, in thanksgiving let us pray. Lord, in thy mercy. I invite you to add your own requests at this time. Lord, in thy mercy. Hear our prayer. Grant these our prayers, O Heavenly Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost, one God, world without end. Amen. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against thee in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved thee with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry. We humbly repent. For the sake of thy Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in thy will and walk in thy ways to the glory of thy name. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, 
who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Hear what comfortable words our Savior Christ saith unto all who truly turn to him. Come unto me, all ye that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Hear also what St. Paul saith. This is a true saying and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John saith. If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. You may be seated. Welcome to All Saints today. Just uh, a few announcements for what's coming up. So starting next Sunday, we're going to eliminate the sign-up procedure, so you'll no longer have to sign up. I think uh, people are pretty good at spreading themselves out between the four services, so um, we're just going to let you come to whichever service you want to um, over the next month. The plan is to continue with the four services at least through the month of July, and then we'll, we'll reassess once we get into August. Now, the one exception to that rule is uh, not next weekend, but the weekend after that, July 4th, is on a Saturday. And so we are not going to have a service on July 4th. We'll just have the three services on Sunday morning, July 5th. But other than that, we will continue to have um, 4 o'clock on Saturday and 8, 10, and noon on Sunday through the month of July. And you won't have to sign up anymore, so just come to whichever one you want. Um, now let your light so shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Please stand. Thine, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty. For all that is in heaven and in the earth is thine. Thine is the kingdom, O Lord, and thou art exalted as head above all. All things come of thee, O Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death in the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord Most High. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in thine infinite love thou didst make us for thyself. And when we had sinned against thee and become subject to evil and death, thou of thy tender mercy didst send thine only Son, Jesus Christ, into the world for our salvation. By the Holy Ghost and the Virgin Mary he became flesh and dwelt among us. In obedience to thy will, he stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself once for all, that by his suffering and death we might be saved. By his resurrection, he broke the bonds of death, trampling hell and Satan under his feet. 
as our great high priest, he ascended to thy right hand in glory, that we might come boldly unto the throne of grace. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. When he had given thanks unto thee, he brake it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks unto thee, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving with these thy holy gifts which we now offer unto thee. Sanctify them, we beseech thee, by thy word and Holy Spirit, that they may be for thy people the body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ. Sanctify us also, that we may worthily receive this holy sacrament, and be made one body with him, that he may dwell in us, and we in him. In the fullness of time put all things in subjection under thy Christ, and bring us with all thy saints into the joy of thy heavenly kingdom where we shall see our Lord face to face. All this we ask through thy Son, Jesus Christ, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ, our Paschal Lamb, has been offered up for us once for all upon the cross. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Continuing on page 15, let us pray. O Heavenly Father, we thank Thee for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of Thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of Thy Son 
and heirs of thy eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work thou hast given us to do, to love and serve thee as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. The peace of God which passeth all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia.